As a tax agent, I have the goal to help all of my clients maximize their tax return. And the easiest way to do this is to make sure they're claiming all the deductions they're entitled to. In today's video, I'm gonna go through five common deductions that people miss. The first is tax software costs. Everyone quite typically will remember to claim their tax agent fees. Most people know that the fee that they paid to their account to do their tax return in the prior year is claimable. But what people often forget is that you can also claim other things for tax preparation costs and quite often that is software. I know this is commonly forgotten because it's a common question I trigger to my clients, especially those that have investments such as crypto or shares. Did you pay for any software? And I know some people have paid for software if they send me reports from a crypto software such as crypto tax calculator, or maybe they've got shares and they send me something like ShareSite. So I can ask them, what did you spend on that software in last year? So it goes off when you spent it because you'll be able to claim that on your tax return. So the easiest way to remember this is when you did your tax return, did you pay for any software that helped you prepare that tax return? Now, there might be some other software or subscriptions that you had that maybe had a personal use portion, but still a portion that was used for your tax return. You can claim these, but make sure you apportion that based on that usage. The second one is income protection insurance premiums. So you can claim the cost of the premiums that you pay for insurance that protects your income, protects your salary and wages. So you need to have paid for this premium outside of super. You can't claim for income protection that is paid through your super fund. You need to have physically paid it outside of your super fund. Now it needs to be for income protection. It can't be for life insurance, trauma insurance, or critical care insurance. It is only for the portion of those insurances that protect your income. And this is because if you receive one of these payments back, so something happens to you and you're claiming an income protection against that policy, that income that's coming back in will be accessible to you in your tax return as income. That's the ATO's way of looking at it, is if this income is gonna be accessible to you when you actually receive it, if you claim on that policy, then that particular portion of the policy will be deductible. The good thing is most insurance companies where you have these policies with, they will send out a letter that will show you which portions were for that, and they will normally say that this is the portion that is normally tax deductible. Obviously do your own research, it will stay in the letter but that way you know what is the portion that was for the income protection purposes that I can claim in my tax return. Now this is something to keep in mind that these have likely gone up, so make sure you don't just copy them from the previous year. Make sure you get that letter and find out how much you actually paid and claim that amount. The third one is donations to charities. And the reason why this is forgotten is because they happen throughout the year and they're not a work-related expense. Typically when people do their tax return, their head is in that work mindset. What did I spend on for work? but they forget that there are a couple other categories that you can still claim in your return, such as donations to charities. So any donation that is $2 or more that is made to a DGR, so a deductible gift recipient, is tax deductible. Now you can go onto the ATO website and it'll have the links where you can go through and search for these, but normally they will tell you that they're a DGR when they issue you with the tax invoice or the receipt. And that is a key thing because you need an invoice or receipt to claim these donations. Now you can claim up to $10 for bucket donations. So these are the ones that you might see at a local supermarket where you put in a dollar or put in 50 cents here or there. Now if it's anything more than $10 across the entire year, then you will need a receipt or invoice for those deductions to be valid. Now because a lot of people are now doing donations online, this is actually a good one to search your emails for. Search the words tax deductible, because quite often when you make these donations and they send you a confirmation email, they will use the words tax deductible in the email somewhere. So that it can be a good way to try and find those donations if you haven't been good at sorting them throughout the year. Personally, I drag all my emailed receipts into a folder called tax. That way I know they're all in one spot. Now, another way to make sure you're maximizing all of your deductions is to be subscribed to this YouTube channel because I'm dropping a lot of content this tax time all about helping you maximize your tax return and teaching you a lot of different tricks about tax that no one else is talking about. Make sure you go and hit that subscribe button so I can get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2023. Let's get back into tip number four. And tip number four is self-education expenses. And this is actually a section that has undergone quite a significant change for the 2023 tax year. And this is because previously, the first $250 of your self-education expenses weren't claimable. So a lot of people only had that in deductions, so therefore they didn't worry about it. But now you're claiming from dollar one. So it's more important than ever to make sure you're getting self-education expenses that you've spent into your tax return. So the ATO do have this bit about the eligibility to claim self-education expenses and it is something they are quite strict on. So they simply state that self-education needs to have a sufficient connection to earning your employment income if it maintains or improves the specific skills or knowledge you require in your employment activities 
or results in or is likely to result in an increase in your income from your employment activities. So you need to meet one of those two definitions for it to be claimable. And as I said, the ATI are strict on this. So make sure you do your research to understand are you actually eligible to claim these expenses in your tax return? Now, if you do tick one of those boxes and you're eligible to claim them, then we need to know, well, what can we claim? And again, the ATO have some stuff on their website talking about this, where they say self-education expenses are the costs you incur when you undertake courses at educational institutions, attend work-related conferences or seminars, or do self-paced learning and study tours. So any of your expenses that are related to these activities are going to be claimable under the self-education section of the tax return. So there's a range of expenses that could apply in this section. It's really going to depend on what you're studying and what kind of costs are actually incurred against that. You could have things like textbooks, or maybe it's stationary, or maybe it's particular course fees. Again, you really need to do your own research to make sure what the, your particular expense is going to be claimable. The most important thing though is making sure you meet those definitions that the ATO had because if you don't meet them, then you're not eligible to claim anything and the ATO will wipe that claim. And the fifth one is work-related travel costs. This one always gets forgotten because they can be small, they happen throughout the year and quite often they can be a paper receipt that people forget to store somewhere. They forget to take a photo, they forget to write it down or they forget to put it in their folder and it goes missing and therefore they forget about that claim. So if you're on a overnight work-related trip, you can claim travel costs. So the ATO simply state that you can claim a deduction for travel expenses, accommodation, meals, incidental expenses, if you travel and stay away from your home overnight in the course of performing your employment duties. So don't forget to keep those food receipts or the accommodation receipts, or maybe you've had to pay for an Uber or some kind of transport cost while you're traveling away for work. This is especially important for those that are traveling regularly, and those costs are going to quickly build up throughout the year. And you're probably going to want to have some system to capture these when you're on the go. Because if you're traveling on the go, you don't want these receipts fading when you put them in your wallet or your purse. Take a photo, store them, whether it's digitally on Dropbox, Google Drive, the ATO My Deductions app. Have a way to store these receipts so you don't forget about them. Now, travel expenses can become a quite complex topic. We can go into things like living away from home and what actually constitutes travel and what becomes your normal place of work. It is a complex topic, way too complex for this video, but make sure you're doing your own research in this area to make sure you're eligible to claim and make sure you're maximizing what you can claim. While we're on the topic of maximizing your return, I have dropped my annual how to maximize your tax return video and it is always a popular video each year. So I'd love for you to go and check that one out if you're in the process of doing your tax return. I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.